Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. It is a night time again. Alright, so we are back on Ken's KE 175. Tonight we're going to be putting on the oiler. And uh, we're going to just see what else we could do to this thing to get this thing up and going. And uh, definitely going to put the oiler on it. Uh, not the oiler, the uh, exhaust on it is what I meant to say. And um, we're just going to keep plugging away at it. Um, piece by piece, little by little, and then see where, where it ends up. So, uh, but before I get you guys in the stand, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button, the bell icon, and please don't forget to give a thumbs up. Helps us move us higher in the algorithms. And, uh, well, your teacher is back, so let's start teaching. Let me get you guys in the stand, and we will get crack a lacking. Okay, so as you guys know, we have, um, basically got the whole clutch cover assembly all back together just kind of giving you a little refresher and um on the last video i was uncertain about the fuel lines and i had figured that out because i forgot that i had tucked in the vent line which is this black line right here that goes to the vent goes up in there and comes out through the air box then which would leave this right here's the fuel line and then we'll use that with the clamp so we'll have to put a clamp on that and then that'll take care of that mess all right so right now we're going to work on putting the exhaust back on the bike very important to get that on there so we can see where things sit lay in like this line right here the oil line so um i just want to make sure i got clearances on everything everything is good and uh well let's get it all together all right now put this on here that's where it's gonna go Right up inside there like that, yep. Yeah. Under the flange there. Get those set on a couple bolts. These bolts down here are the flared uh, flanged ones. So if you have the flange bolts, they, that's where they go on there. Flange nuts, I should say. Not bolts. I always set them on first, and then I hang the, the rest of the exhaust. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay. Like that, yep. And then, we'll put the rest of it together. I start all the bolts. like that and then I tighten up the header bolts first that's going to push it back to where it's got to go and then we can tighten up the back too all right let me get a one second this thing's set up where it's got to go okay all right I'm just trying to get some voltage out of the way here for a minute you know what? Change of plans. We're not going to put the exhaust on today because we still have to put the thread insert in. So we're going to leave this sitting like that. Right now we're going to put the, the brake on. We'll get the brake put back on and uh, set up. That we can do right now. Which is a pain in the butt to get on. There we go, because it has to be on there absolutely just right. And then we'll tighten up this bolt here. And then we have two springs to put on. So let me get the, let me get my drill for that. Tighten this up here. That movement and it does and then we have two springs we have to put on one's a return and one is a um what you call it there one's for the light so we have to figure out where those go looks like they go in the back there there's one spring that goes from here. i'll show you in a second all right 
So I don't know if you can see it or not too well, but right back here, there's a little um, hook piece, like like a little, it looks like a mushroom sticking off the end right there, and that's where the springs latch onto. On the uh, the 175 has two longer, one longer spring, one shorter spring. The longer spring goes to the bottom of the switch, and on the back side of the pedal. Right here, there's actually a hole. If you see, if you see it. Yeah, see that little hole right there? Right there? And that's where I gotta hook the springs on to. So, I'm gonna let me move you right in this area here. Okay, so we're gonna do one at a time here. We have one spring. These can be kind of hard to do. Let me get the light. Like that, and then it goes up to that little part that I showed you there. Get a screwdriver of some sort. Here we go. Okay. Okay, and that's the first one. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna just take you out so you can see it real quick. And you can see how it hooks on to that right there. And down to that little circle. Just like that. And over that little mushroom little looking thing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook on to that same pole that the spring came out of right there. I'm going to hook the biggest spring into that as well. Right now the spring that hole is big enough for two to go through it and then let's see if I can get a light in there. Which kind of complicated you already got one spring in this and you gotta fit another hook into it. There is room. There we go. Alright, now that we get that there. We can then hook that part if right, you'll get a pair of needle nose. Okay. Just a pair of needle nose pliers. This is harder than it looks. Then when you pull this down, brake lever down, it pulls the switch down and turns the lights on. Okay, now I have to see how the gap, so when he took this off, he spread it open a little bit. We're going to close that up, but just a tad. We don't want to, we don't want to destroy the spring. All right, now we'll just... Just a little bit. I just want I want it to be like in a perfect U. Okay, so now let's get out of here. I show you what that actually looks like. We're hooked into the sensor right here, so when I pull down, you can actually see the thing drop down. Okay, and then you have your springs in the back. Both of them come through here. And that's how it looks. And then the other one hooks on. In the back there, so they're basically in a V, in a V shape. Okay, so now that we get that part done, let's get the other part done. We have there's so much to do on this bike; it's not even funny. So we still get this motor running. This peg is keyed in, so it's like a special way it goes. Like that, okay. And we're gonna put the Kickstarter on. So that is gonna come up here like this, but we're gonna do that after the. Um, typically, you would do it after the cover's on. We're gonna do it before that. So to set this, basically straight up and down like that. Perfect. And let's go. One more tooth. This 
yeah, perfect. I like that better. Um, yeah, that looks good to me. We're gonna set this in. We're not gonna tighten this down just yet because we want to make sure that the the cover is gonna have clearance. We don't want this part right here to hit the cover, so we're not gonna tighten that now. But we are gonna tighten up this peg, and then uh, once we get the peg tight, we can move on from there. Okay. Okay. All right, just tighten that up with my Milwaukee M12. It was quite loud, so I did it off camera. And that's nice and tight. This is nice and tight. Kickstart is just set on there. We need a clamp for the fuel line. And then, what do you call it there? After we put that on, we can cone it and put that, that cover on. We're not going to do that tonight. We'll do it tomorrow. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We have to do, we have to move the spike. We get the spike moved out and flipped around because we have to put the oil reservoir on there and then um, get this mounted in. Okay, so I'm going to pause you guys for a few minutes and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate the bike so we can go ahead and put that oil reservoir on. Okay, got the bike moved into its new position so we can take this cover off and install the oil tank Which goes under the left cover Also, I noticed that uh, so I had talked to Ken about the bike and um, I had said to him I said listen, I said the bike is uh, just about done and um, They should be ready to be picked up next week and he said, oh, that's awesome. That's great and um he says something about the the way it was running. It was running bad. And um, so I said, well, we'll take a look at it and see what's going on with that as well. And then I says, this bike is too clean, too nice. And I look at that beautiful tank. And I says, wow, this tank, this bike is in pristine condition. What could be wrong with it? And um, he has a petcock in the box, a brand new petcock. I'm sitting there. You don't just randomly replace a petcock. Um, so there's something going on. I figured I'd take the tank and open it up. And to my dismay, it's got some rust. So, but it also, yeah, it, it's rusty. So we are going to clean that tank. Um, and it'll take, to, to clean the rust out of a tank, I don't know, see here. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's bad, but it's not that bad. It, probably 45, probably 45 minutes will take, we'll clean that tank up like brand new. So, um, I'll do that afterwards and I'll show you guys my technique for speed cleaning a tank when you got to get a bike out and you got to get the bike up and running properly. I will show you that uh, technique tonight. We're going to pull that tank off. And uh, we're going to pull the seat off, the cover off, and get the oil um, tank reservoir. I like saying that. It's fun to say. Kind of like armoire. You know, armoire. Right? No? Okay. Anyway. Um, so let's start. Let's get you guys in the stand. We'll start tearing this bike down. And uh, tank off, seat off, cover off, oil tank on. We are going to use that new, um, that line, that clear line that he got for like from a lawnmower thing because that line is bad for fuel but it's great for an oil reservoir so that's what we're going to use on the oil tank but not on the fuel line i already got fuel line on there we're going to use the yellow stuff i had some extra left over so we're going to use the yellow for the fuel line and we're going to use the clear for the oil line because it's good stuff for that all right let's get you guys in the stand and let's get crack a lacking all right so the first thing we're going to do is pull the seat off there's two little Clips on the back, pull them back, slide it back, and there she is, seat's out. All right, now we got the seat out. Let's put that off the side. Real simple to do. And then to get the fuel tank off, the fuel line's already disconnected, so we're good there. There's a little strap here, kind of like the KD-80s and all that. And he's also got some wiring going on up in here. Orange, some melt. Easy enough to fix, to set on that. So we have positive, that's ground. Okay, that's gonna come out and we're gonna fix that. Okay. Okay, cool. 
Tank is off. There is some fuel in there, so not in this video, but in the next one, I'm going to teach you guys how to do a fuel sample and what you're looking for. Okay. Fuel samples tell you a lot about a bike, and uh, they're a very important part in uh, engine diagnostics, especially if it's a running condition problem, which is uh, what he's having. Okay. These covers right here, I believe, just pop off. Okay, easy peasy, lemon squeezy is a line right here, which is an oil line right here. Okay, so there's the oil line. So we have two oil lines. Well, we have two oil lines. Oh no, okay, it, it actually just went back into its natural place. Okay. So that's the same line we put on earlier. It just came through that way. All right. So it's naturally bent. It went in its natural spot. So we know if the oil line comes through here, I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. So now we're going to get into some technical stuff that's going to help you with your bikes. So here is the oil reservoir right here. And then here is this little nipple down bottom. And you can easily break this nipple off. Okay, it's very easy to break off. In fact, no, this one's not broken off, but uh, it's, uh, what do you call it there? It's got a groove in it where they crimped it at one time. Okay, so we'll get to be careful of this. I'm going to show you guys a couple of things, and um, hopefully it helps you. One, never twist one of these lines off. Okay, if the bike has been sitting and the oil line is hard, what you're going to do is take a razor blade and cut the line, and then, then you'll be able to take it right off. So, um, never twist a line. Always pull it, but when you're pulling it, take a razor blade and cut through the rubber on the hose. That'll make it come off a whole lot easier. You'll be able to take your thumb in there, separate it, and then the nipple will be in place without hurting. That's tech tip one. Second, when putting them on, the Permatex Ultra Slick. Put a little dab on your finger. Go around it. Okay? We'll lubricate it. Then, don't twist. Push right on all the way up. Like that. Don't pull it off because it won't come back off. You're going to cut it with the... Uh, which we call it there, razor blade. Then I'm doing this now, so I don't have to risk breaking it when it's on the bike. And then that's it. Use the clamp, you're good to go. All right, let me just clean up my little oily mess right there, and then we'll put this into place and get it all bolted down. Thought I was recording. All right, fishing the oil the oil line back up through. Now on this. He tended something very smart. He put nuts on the back sides of these bolts, even though there, there's no nuts required. Okay, he did that so he wouldn't lose the screws, and it was a very clever idea. Also makes for putting the bike back together a whole lot easier. So these are going to underneath here. The cap will cap this right up in here. So where they going to go? Just like that. And then I'll take a screwdriver, my pair of pliers, and take those three nuts off and then screw this into place. And on these bikes, in case you're wondering, that's your CDI box right there underneath the fuel tank. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> it's amazing. All right, let's get this uh, oil line, uh, not oil line, oil tank reservoir. Mount it back up. I already took out the bolts and now you have to send the place and make sure that there's no kinks on the line. Yeah, that line's fitting perfectly. Okay, nice. Now we'll just set all these in. B 
because the ears are plastic, I do not like to use the impact on these. I find it's a little bit too harsh. But we'll just set them in there with our Phillips number three. Some of these tabs, I think, are a little, uh, a little stretched or bent. Do not tighten them all up yet until you get all three of them in. Make sure you get all three in at the same time. Then, after you get done doing that, then it's okay to go ahead and tighten them. Crank them right down. Okay. okay. Now the bike has a good reservoir. And of course, we'll put this cover back on. And that's all there was to that. Not a whole lot. Check the peg, make sure it's all in there. Make sure you get it all tight. Everything's good. The cover cases are on and tight. I'm just doing a visual inspection as I go with it, you know. So, now that I'm thinking about the tank and all that, I think I'm going to have to do a full fuel system tune-up on a dirt bike. And this is going to um, take a bike that's running rough and not correct and all that and make it run cherry, pristine, first kick. I think I need to do a first kick tune-up um, video and teach you guys how to do a complete fuel system from cap to drain on a fuel tank, carburetor and fuel lines and all that. So I And Petcock, I'm, I'm going to do that. That's going to be a great video. That will be coming up soon. All right, I'm going to get this bike back into position, and then we're going to keep crack a lacking. All right, so over on this side of the, of the bike, we're back at the oil pump. And I'm going to show you um, what I was talking about on the other one. I know you guys understood. I'm just going to show it to you in practice. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to grab this clamp. I'm going to rotate this clamp around so I can get to it. These clamps typically, after, they get, uh, after the line gets hard, these clamps wear out. This one's very loose. I can actually just find if I can get the, the power connects. Just rotate it around. Just kind of rotate the clamp. Okay. At least this clamp is junk. Right off there, a bit off. Okay, so now the line you can see the line right there. This whole thing is just kind of hard and crusty. We're going to pull this grommet out, slide it right off the end of this. It's actually got another clamp on that side over there. Okay, all right, so now we're stuck with a banjo and a uh, what do you call it there? The oil line on there. What we're going to do is pretend that this banjo is plastic. It's not, but we're going to pretend it is. I'm going to show you guys how I take the lines off of oil reservoirs. It's a little, um, this is how I do them. So, and this is the way it's worked, and I've never had an issue. I take a regular razor blade. And I cut the line then once you get through the line because you're not going to reuse it I take my finger and I put my finger in there this one's already broke free see right now it's already loose now you can pull it out because that right there broke it free 
once you cut it, it breaks it free. You'll find your groove. You'll pull that up. Just carefully don't cut yourself because you can slip up the knife. Sometimes you'll have to use a pair of, uh, not a pair, a uh, screwdriver and kind of put it in the groove and separate it. Your object is to not put pressure on the nipple. You just want to be able to lift it, if you can, without gently put pressure on it, pulling up. But don't, don't twist it unless it moves. So give it a little twist like that. If it breaks free, that's okay. You can twist it all day long. You're not going to break the nipple off. But if it's hard, you can't. Don't touch it. Cut some more. If it does that, then you can cut it again on another spot. Because don't forget, this, the barb, okay, is a little fatter than the actual nipple itself. That's how it seals. So if you can, this is going to rotate on that barb all day long. So you don't want to put the pressure on that. That's why we cut it to relieve the pressure because this line is now hard. This is this is stiff. I mean, you can't even bend that there. So you don't want to put the pressure on that. You want to take you want to relieve the pressure and you relieve it simply by cutting it. And that's gonna take the uh, the edge of it off. And you can do multiple cuts all the way around as many as you need. But that's just how I do them. And then you can put this right underneath and lift because I'm dealing with a very soft here we go just popped off so this line you see that that fat part right there right where my my fingernail is that's where the barb sits that's where it's stuck it's not stuck down here it's not stuck up here it's stuck right on that barb those are the barbs right there okay then we take the new line we slip this underneath here like so Make sure it's comfortable. There's a little bit of slack in the line. Figure out where we want it, and then we're going to cut it. Looks good to me. Feels good. Yep. Looks good there. Okay. Cut the line. We'll go get a clamp, and we'll put a clamp on it. All right. Take the line. Slide it back out. Put the clamp on it. Put that right on like that. Then the clamp. I'm gonna rotate it out of the way so it doesn't hit the uh, the mechanism. Slice so out. Put the grommet in. The oil line is in fact connected, and I put a clamp on the fuel hose as well. So this cover can actually go back on the on the bike, but first we're gonna bleed it, which we're not doing tonight. There is a little bleed thing over there on the top, so we'll do that tomorrow night. All right. All right. So I just put a little bit of oil in the reservoir. It's kind of hard to do it one-handed, and I'm using the Kawasaki Performance Oils semi-synthetic two-stroke engine racing oil. This is what I'm using for this and. We'll let the oil flow through and as you can tell it is not flowing through until we break the line so right now it's airbound so in order to get this thing unairbound, you have to crack open the bleeder and then it will come down through but i'm not doing that right now i'm actually gonna pick up it's almost uh it's almost well almost one so i'm gonna um what do you call it there clean up my mess for the night and uh we'll hit the stuff tomorrow i'll talk to you guys after before I go, I'm going to show you something real quick. So, there's a bleeder up inside here. But to um, get this thing to go a little faster, you um, loosen up one of these, the banjo bolts. 
it'll probably get a good flow in a minute. You can probably use this one too. Depending upon where it's located at. We'll just tighten this one back up. See if it gets any flow going to it. Sometimes it'll take a little bit. It's one of the things I like to do is to see how how it goes. Let some air. So what's happening is the weight of the oil is pushing down on the tank, and it's supposed to flow right here. See, look. See. That's because I'm letting the air out of the line. And then I'll just, once it gets out to here, it starts leaking a little bit. Like that. Right there. That line, I think that banjo bolt is just broken. I'm going to replace that banjo bolt. I just don't like the feel of it. See if anything comes out of the side. Yeah, not quite, not yet. I am going to replace that banjo bolt. I don't like the way it felt. Yeah, it has to be run. It has to be turning over. That's what I thought. All right, let me tighten up this one right here. See if I have a banjo bolt. I can't leave that at night because if I forget that to replace that and it leaks, I'm gonna be upset. Okay, that one's nice and tight. So a banjo bolt literally has a hole going through the center of it. All the way down to these two right here. So the oil goes um, from the line into this hole right here. And then into the pump. So when I was torquing on this. I felt it kind of ding. You know. So I feel like it's, it's broken. I just don't like the feel of it. So I'm going to replace it. When I don't like the way something feels. I'm pretty much certain it's doomed okay. especially when I have them I might as well replace them okay. yeah that felt a lot better okay all right now I feel more confident in that I replaced that banjo bolt so we're good there now this thing right here is all set and look look at some oil actually started coming up through I don't know if you can see that or not right there you can see where the oil is coming up it's actually creeping up right now and who knows it'll probably just prime itself so right now the oil pump will start pumping oil right out right off the right off the bat so once we start doing that and that will that'll be awesome okay good so we're good there all right so we have oil coming from there but before we start this engine oil has to be up in this whole line without without air bubbles all right guys i'm gonna call it a night i'll see you guys tomorrow